Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and in this video we're going to talk about diagonalization applications. We're going to look at two main applications. First, we're going to look at finding powers of a matrix. After that, we'll talk about diagonalization as really a best basis representation. Well, let's start by looking at powers of A. So, let A be some matrix, there's our matrix. And it has the diagonalization as shown. So we have our A is equal to P times D times P inverse. And so what are the uses of this? Well, let's try to calculate A raised to the 10th power. Now recall that by definition, this is not, not the components raised to the 10th power. By definition, this is A times A times A 10 times. So I'm just multiplying A by itself. In general, that's pretty complicated to do. But if I think of each one of these A's, as equal to p times d times p inverse, well then this would look like p times d times p inverse, that would be my first a, times my second a, times my third a, times my fourth a, so on and so forth, until let's just write the last two. And now this is all just one big long string of matrix multiplication. But matrix multiplication is associative, so I can really do it in any order. And so I'll choose to multiply these two together first, and these two, and these two, and so on, and so forth. And all those inside values turn out to be just the identity matrix. Just the identity. So on and so forth. But of course the identity matrix times any other matrix is just that other matrix. So all these identity matrices look like they disappear. Really, we're just taking D times identity is just D. And what I'm left with is P times that matrix, what I'm left with is P times that matrix D to the 10th power times P inverse. Now at this point you say, have I really done any good here? I started off with a matrix to the 10th power, now I have a matrix to the 10th power. But I really have made progress because since this matrix is diagonal, then to find the power of a diagonal matrix, it's really just the diagonal entries raised to that power. And we can actually show that by just calculating a couple of, of those powers. So take some diagonal matrix and try to square it, try to cube it, and you'll see what happens there. But this is one of the advantages, because now to calculate this, where I would have had to calculate 10 matrix multiplications, now I can just do a three matrix multiplications. So that really is a big cost saving or a computing time savings. All right, what other applications do we have? So why matrix powers? Well, it turns out taking matrix powers occurs very often in real application. Often when we're doing a modern algorithm, we might have to take a matrix and apply it to something many, many, many times, essentially multiplying it by a power of a matrix. So this will help us do those powers. And that same sort of repetition is also visible when we talk about difference equations using matrix notation and vocabulary. Now what else? What other applications can we see? The next one I'll talk about is thinking about the diagonalization in terms of choosing the best basis to represent a transformation. So here we have some matrix A, and we can express it as the product of these values. So we can diagonalize A. But if A represents a transformation, it might be easier to apply the transformation in a different basis. So what are we doing here? We are looking at A mapping some value of X to some output. So here's my value X. I am taking this and I am mapping it to AX. But A is just P times D times P inverse. Now we'll just let that sit here for a second as we recall a couple things. First, if I have some vector x and I have a basis, which I will call p1, p2, p3, so on and so forth as my basis elements, then any vector in my space I should be able to write as a linear combination of those basis vectors for some basis here with, in p's. But I see that vector equation is just the same thing as this matrix equation, and this right hand side looks like the p coordinates of x times this matrix p, 
is going to output our vector x. And we can think of that vector in terms of the standard basis we want. So what we can see is multiplying by this matrix is essentially doing a change of basis. And that's what we're going to look at this expression. Multiplying first by p inverse essentially changed the basis that I'm working with. So it takes this x as standard coordinates, and when I multiply by the inverse, I get a new x, but now in my eigenvector basis. Now the next matrix I'm going to multiply is d. d essentially does the transformation that a did, but now it does it in a cleaner way. So when I multiply by d, I'm just stretching along whatever the basis vectors are. So now I've done an easier transformation to get some result over here. d times the coordinates in terms of the p basis. And I take that result, and I use p, the matrix p, to change my basis back. I'm left that same position, ax. So another way we can think about this diagonalization is by looking at its action on a vector x. First we change the basis and then we do a simplified version of the transformation, and then we change our basis back. All right, so in this video, we've talked about applications of diagonalization. We looked at how we can use them to take powers of matrices. And now we've looked at a little bit of how we can think about that diagonalization as really just choosing the best basis for our transformation. And that concludes this video. Thank you.